Welcome back. I'm, <laughs> I've got a kitty in my face. <laughs> you don't say that too often. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation, along with... <laughs> CJ Leaf for the Fire It Up with CJ Show. <laughs> It's real world. If you've ever wanted goodness or greatness in your life, then you do we have the wait for it? Show for you. <laughs> oh gosh, it's good. I don't think I've ever had a show like this with you, Michael, before. Today we'll talk about finding patience, growing patience, and discovering patience when all you want is the answer right now. That oh. plus we'll talk about Hana echocardiograms health insurance, lake houses, sound machines, and magic pillows, Kintsugi, a life review, kitty named Slash, <laughs> and what in the world, a winter wonderland on both coasts, and Rue has to do with anything. So welcome back to the show, CJ. <laughs> Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine. <laughs> It's 6.30 in the morning, and I haven't been waking up, so apologies if I seem a little bit groggy, <laughs> but I think I, I can it, do it. You've I already it highly has, entertained me. <laughs> I think it has to do with Jessica's lack of sleep with the pregnancy, but uh, my watch has said, like, today is one of the best days of sleep. It, it registers your sleep, and it says, I think, quality is somewhere between poor and fair. <laughs> That's the best. <laughs> so I'm with you. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, well you start first. I, there's so much to catch up on. Uh yeah, and we'll do the kind of the express version today. It has I know it's been snowing a lot or at least very cold where you're at in the northwest. Here we got our first snow outside of New York City last night. I don't know, four or five, <coughs> six inches, somewhere in that range. Rue is looking out the window going, ah! <laughs> Is this his first, it's not his first snow, is it? You're from Colorado, right? No, no. Well, but uh, he was a spring check in Colorado, and we moved because of the fires before snow season. So I put him down in snow, um, in about an inch of snow a few weeks ago when we had one inch, and right by the driveway. And, and I, I didn't do it like, ha-ha, you're stuck in snow. Um, it was uh, two steps to the driveway, and he looked at the snow, took one step, <laughs> took two steps onto the driveway, and he's like, I don't want to stand in that cold stuff. So, But he got to at least look at it. This is a, a little bit more substantial, but uh, I think he's down with it. He doesn't want to play in it, but but he's okay with it. But can he go outside? He, so he has to just go in your – your. you have yeah, to hold him have, then. Yeah, we, we have it set up uh, because going outside, just leaving him in the snow would be uh, absolutely, I think, no fun. His feet have a lot acclimatized. I'm yeah. sure they could. Um, but it's been a warm fall, uh, relatively speaking, meaning 50s rather than 30s. Oh, no. So I'll take him out for a walk. I don't know about later today, but tomorrow bundled up like a little uh, burrito, basically, <laughs> with a blanket all around him. Um, but he'll be yeah. fine with it. You get used to it. I mean, even for us, it was snowy here. Um, it snowed and snow. I don't think I've had this much snow maybe in my whole Seattle lifetime. And I've been here a really long time. There was a ton of snow and it literally melted two days ago. But before that, it was just snow on the ground for about a week. So, I mean, and it's beautiful. I, I'm the kind of person who thinks it's beautiful and I like crunching around and the ice is okay. Other people around here were some. Some other people were not enjoying it as much because nothing. No one plows anything here on the on the east coast. People plows come and plow everything, or they sand everything down. Where we are in Seattle, it happens so rarely that no one plows the road. No one. I mean, basically, what happens is the cars drive over the snow yep. and then it melts the snow. But aside from that, on like the side roads, it's just like a sheet of ice all over the place. The sidewalks. The neighbors also don't shovel, so it's just like a sheet of ice all over the place. Wow. So, yes. I, I know for us, the main roads are plowed, side roads are somewhat plowed. We're supposed to go look at a couple homes later today yeah. uh, for, for rental, which is the, the wait for it game. And uh, because we were supposed to be going to Florida and we still don't know where we're ending up, wow. the Tesla has uh, uh, West Coast summer tires on her, so we'll be taking the big truck. So. <laughs> what do you mean? You're... Va you're uh, your house the truck, that, the truck that pulls the rv oh wow is, oh. is uh, uh snow tires yeah. four-wheel drive and it, it looks like you could put a hummer in the back of it <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh okay <laughs> this is from the eco twins <laughs> <laughs> but 
you do what you need to do when exactly, you need to do it. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So, so, so um, tell me more about um, tell me more about what's happening for for Hana. So Hana, we had the uh, test, the big test a week and a half ago on her heart uh, mm -hmm. after surgery, and um, her heart had gone from a cardiac score, depending on who you ask, of between 10 and 11. Zero is is great heart. 20 is um, not doing well at all. And she was 10 or 11. And then after, when we got the, the latest test, was down to a four. Oh, Ooh. good. Yay. So that's awesome. And then we have, um, we had an ultrasound this week, a local ultrasound. It says she's looking great. Local ultrasound next week. I'm sure they're going to say looking great. And then we have the next uh, echocardiogram. And hopefully they're going to say she's at a cardiac score of zero. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it's a wait for it game. Yeah. Uh, but even if not, she's trending in the amazing right direction. And we know she's going to be fine. So Yay. that's awesome, awesome, awesome. And uh, it would have been good if I had brought the pictures over here. Um, so you've got the latest ultrasound picture. She's at five months now. So we're, we're, we're getting oh, there. Wow, Michael. So. Wow. Okay, cool. What's the youngest preemie that that's ever been, or is there any chance that there's? I don't know a about a world what the world record is, but 23 is typically maybe even somewhere in the 22 and a half range to 23 is is viability. Yeah. Um, but I, I believe we'll do much 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 better than that. The big Good. question is where do we want to be? We had wanted to be in Florida. We had right. wanted to be in New Hampshire and Vermont, and my guess is now with all the uh, medical tests going on. We're going to try to stay locally just through the birth. And so this is this is such a both a letting go and having patience for this is not where you want to be. This is not how you want to be. It's all good. Yeah. I'm just well, and plus Jessica, par Jessica's parents are there, and so they're going to want to see the baby. And yeah. wait, so what's the when's the due date? When's the due date at this point? May twenty eighth. May twenty eighth. So you'll have a Taurus baby. Uh, Gemini. Oh, Gemini. Oh. Yeah. So when we had Kim Russo on uh, last summer, she said, I see Gemini for your baby. And she goes, hmm, does that mean born under Gemini or twins? And she's like, wow. I can't say with that. Wow. Uh, and so obviously we know how this is all uh, uh, gone about. Um, so we're back to Gemini uh, landing date. Wow. Wow. Okay, good. May May 28th. Okay, got yes. it. All right, good. Oh, I'm so glad. I have a feeling when you have light shining on your face like a like a uh, uh, like a godlike figure on your and, face. And I, I guess I could have turned on the lights behind me No, it's good. It's it's snow. fine. It's fine. All right. <laughs> So um, during the winter wonderland, um, we had this um, Kintsugi thing. Did I, I? I didn't tell you anything about that. I think so. No, but is that is that what I was talking about a few weeks ago about you know things break and then you glue them back together and they're even better because and and then I was showing you my 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 funky wrist kind of thing is this is you know human Kintsugi is the scars that you wear yes can can actually be what what. Uh, makes you better yeah so i wish I, I wish i had brought the bowl that was my mistake I, and we don't have enough time for me to show you but um so you have a little bowl you know it's about the size of a soup bowl you put it in a velvet bag just like you do during jewish weddings where you crush down the you know the glass underneath so you have it in a a, a velvet bag and then you put it at, at knee length yeah exactly you put it at <laughs> knee length you don't stomp on it but you put it at, at around you know knee height and you drop it on the ground and and I would think it's not going to break, you know. I mean, it's a bowl, and I've had stuff fall from the kitchen counter and not break. So I don't know how, on a wooden floor. So I don't really know how this thing is going to break. But, anyways, I I go outside and and um and it's very interesting because you learn a lot about people's um, desire for change. So they're so they have the bowl. You're supposed to break it, and then there are people who are really upset about breaking the bowl and. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. I'm not supposed to break the bowl. And meanwhile, I'm in the background like, let's break this thing. <laughs> like, I'm, Give me the hammer. <laughs> I'm ready. You know, I'm like, let's go, man. Like, why is this taking so long? So it was just interesting, the different kinds of personalities. So I go, I drop the bowl, and, um, and it's snowing, so I'm not even sure if the bowl is going to break. I get it. I open up the – you're not supposed to do this, but I guess – 
I don't know. I open it up and in this thing, is like, not, I don't even know, like 20 pieces. <laughs> and wow. in contrast, there are people, and I don't even know how this woman did it. She broke it in three perfectly sliced pieces. I'm like, did you just, I mean, come on. Did you even drop this? <laughs> Mine was in 20 pieces. And it was, and I kind of looked at it and I thought, oh my gosh. What have I done? And then you have to glue these pieces together with this fast drying cement that dries like in three minutes. So if you glue it incorrectly, it's like it's there. And it's supposed to, you're supposed to get to the, you know, the art of imperfection and being okay. So um, one of my coworkers had done it and she, you, if you break it right, you, th there's this rim around the whole thing. And when you glue all the pieces and if they're not, you know, you don't glue them in the right order. Then what happens is you start trying to put the little piece in and it doesn't fit anymore because it's like the whole thing is slightly misaligned. So she showed us that bowl in the very beginning, which then set me in a panic. Like, oh, the last thing I want to do is have a missing piece out of my bowl. So I sat there trying to engineer this thing. <laughs> so this wouldn't happen. You're just to glue one piece at a time. So I found like a way to glue two or three pieces on the time so that I could actually make sure the rim was good. <laughs> yeah. wow. So it was just, it was, what it was is more of uh, um, the desire to want to fit everyone in, which is actually my mindset. And then um, the desire to have like, you know, obsess about one thing and have it perfect. Um, and while as the other people had this, you know, she had a big gash in her bowl and she painted it gold and, and it was beautiful. But I just really, for whatever reason, did not want to have that. So it just showed so much about every single person's personality. And some people couldn't even glue the bowls back together. Like they may not have glued it back together because it. I think the whole process traumatized. There are people who were crying um, while they were doing it because I what you're supposed to do is set an intention. And so what, you know, there are people who have lost both their husband and their father during, you know, a six month period. And so people were going through um, the process of breaking and going through so many emotional things. So I wish I could show you my bowl. Next time I'll have to it's, show you my bowl. We, we, we obviously parallel on so many things. So I taught a, a class for a school of mystics on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And the theme this month is uh, awakening to a higher realm. And I went into uh, uh, channeling for what this class was going to be about. And it was be becoming a rebel. Mm -hmm. And a rebel means to let go or break or it used the analogy of even the Jewish breaking of the you know, stomping of the glass to allow yourself to see the world from a higher level. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what you're talking about. And it's so hard for us to let go of it, it, what I got out of it, and, and also I've been channeling Miraku, and what she's saying is, is humanity is addicted to comfort and discomfort. Mm -hmm. Even when something is incredibly uncomfortable, we will take that over change. Yeah. Yeah. The breaking of the habit of being yourself, Dr. Joe Dispenza, is just all. It's like you have a habit of being yourself, including being a depressed self or, you know, or a pain-filled self because you... Um, there's called this idea of secondary benefits. So I was, someone was taking a class and um, they were, they had a back pain or, or some type of back injury and they could have fixed it, but they couldn't, they kept on not being able to move forward. And then the sh short version of the story is that the person's secondary benefit was that they were able to get handicap spots. So they would rather have an injury um, and live with it than actually be healed because they wanted the the handicap spot so well, it goes right back to being a child you poor thing yeah. you poor thing you hear that enough and you go wow it's good for me to be screwed up hurt or this or that you get attention release, but yes yeah and so we take ownership i can remember that in my old barefoot running days when people would come and they'd say well you're not gonna you know uh get me to run barefoot or my feet i have plantar fasciitis i have knees that are falling off i have this that or that and they're very, I almost want to use the word aggressive. It, it is, it is such a <laughs> murderous response. If you try to change somebody's identity, they feel they're being attacked at their core, at their core. And so when you tell somebody you can heal from something that 
they identify themselves with, they will fight back hard. Yeah. Well, it's um, I, I've, I've noticed one thing that, um, you know, I'm doing this whole class on different types of personality types and different ways of responding. And you either respond aggressively or passively, right? I mean, that's just kind of not a uh, ha, but you don't really know what kind and there are four flavors within each of those. And one of them is being rigid. And, um, and I realized that I had a mom that was very rigid. You know, it was always like black or white and nothing in between. And of course, I think both you and I see gray and like shades of gray. <laughs> you know, like this is. Yes. And so the rigidity, and I realized that rigidity, it's one of those things that triggers me. And, and I realized in, um, the Chinese culture is very rigid. There's all mm -hmm. sorts of rules that you have to fulfill. And if you're not this, you're not a good daughter, you know, wife, whatever, mother. And so there's all these rules. And, and those rules and, and, and the rule book is so thick, as you know from Jessica. And if you don't follow those rules, you're bad, you know. So that rigidity has actually haunted me my whole life. But then I've had a projected response around people who are rigid. I just lose my temper entirely as a result of it. But even just recognizing that is a huge thing to say like, okay, you're rigid too. So it's okay. It's all okay to be rigid and not want to change. Um, because you have to change at the pace that you want to change. And if you That's go too so. fast, it just doesn't, it doesn't work as well. Everyone has their own kind of homeostasis path and then also everyone wants homeostasis that's easy but to change is, is hard and you should go as slowly as you need to i've been very proud with jessica's parents and very impressed with them because you know, this whole baby situation the whole everything situation has has required a huge level of letting go for them mm -hmm. and they're doing exceptionally well because it's not it's not their cultural skill set, mm -hmm. um, but um, no matter what, we say, well, we don't know where we're going from here, and they're like, it's okay. <laughs> You're their gift, or they're like, oh, I'm learning about Taoism now. I've learned about Confucianism. I can say at least from my understanding about the Chinese culture and my own family is like, you learn how like parents are supposed to tell you what good looks like and how, how you're supposed to conduct your life. And so when all of a sudden they are, they lose that role or they, un, you know, where they go through the shift of being grandparents where it's like, yeah, this is no longer, you know, have no control over kids. They, they, they fight and try. And then, yeah. and then you either let them or you go, no, thank you. <laughs> and then you just step away. And I think it's hard for any parent, including myself, when I get to that point, um, when we have grandkids, even at the point where my kids are now to just say like, step away you don't know, you, you don't know what's best for their life path. Yeah. They know what's best for their life path. And you need to just step aside and let things go and go into the flow. Um, can I share one story that is just incredible? I don't know Please. what's happening. The more we've been talking about um, in, in the last couple shows, the more you tune in, the more you feel things and the more sensitive you become. You're talking about crying during your meditations for, I'm sure, several different reasons. But also it's like tuning into the field. And I, I'm not sure what's happening, but I just know things before I know things. Like I, So I was up, so I have to go upstairs. And I went upstairs and I saw... Um, we had like styrofoam tied around um, the faucets because it was so cold and we didn't want to break them. And at the minute I looked outside, the styrofoam unlatched and it was floating in the air. I'm like, oh, wow. okay. And I just like got it, <laughs> put it in. I'm like, I guess this is why I'm supposed to go upstairs because, you know, styrofoam, if it breaks, is like a nightmare and it's bad for the planet, et cetera. So I was like, ah, oh, okay. And then I was driving to my chiropractor and I was like, you need your neck adjusted. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, okay. Because my neck doesn't hurt at all. It's like, your neck needs to be adjusted. And I was like, okay. And it said, it's that thing that, it's called the Atlas. And I was like, okay. So I'm driving and I was like, I don't know. I got this intuitive message. He's like, I've never seen your cervical, I've never seen your cervical spine this way before. He's like, you're, I've never seen your neck this way. It's all messed up. And so just, you just know, but you don't know how you know, and you're hearing things and I don't know. It, it's it's just the most cool bizarre thing. But it's it's and someone said, "Oh, it's being in the flow." I'm like, "Oh, 
I see. I didn't understand that when people say go with the flow, mm -hmm. it's if you just let allow, allow life to take you. But at this, I didn't understand it. For me, I think of go with the flow, like life isn't going your way. Just try to see what, what life wants, where your life wants to take you and take you. But I think the next level of this is that you'll just be like, you know, like a little puppeteer going upstairs and seeing styrofoam float in the sky. It's so bizarre. I can't even tell you. Oh, I just watched as you're saying that a squirrel jump from one tree, from one branch and onto the other. Oh, oh and onto the next one. Totally in that flow. Yeah, it's really weird. I just, okay. So anyways, that's, so tell me about you and your um, sound machines and magic pillows. It sounds kind of cool. So we, we got uh, we we got a, a white noise machine. We'd been we'd been using kind of a, a, a um, I don't want to say Mickey Mouse. I don't, I don't want to trademark this show. Mickey Mouse set up for a sound machine, but we got a little sound machine mm -hmm. for Jessica, and we've got another one coming for Rue. Actually, she stole the one that was for Rue, and so she's been getting better night's sleep. That along with a magic kind of U-shaped pregnancy pillow or C-shaped pregnancy pillow. They used to be long, thin, rectangular ones. What's a C one? Well, it's it's more donut shaped with a center or one side of the donut taken out. So it, it curves around her back and goes between her knees and her arms. So she stays on her side and she's she's snuggled in. Wow, that's really cool. So that's a new contraption. They didn't have that. There yeah. used to be a side pillow, which was just a rectangular. But this is a way to keep your hips, it sounds like, in the right yeah. alignment and your legs. Okay, that is so cool. And, and that's so helpful because we haven't been sleeping much. I'm, like I was saying before the start of this show, my, my sleep uh, sleep score number on my watch said 62 out of 100. I, I love looking at these metrics. To, yeah. I want to improve the metrics. <laughs> You know, if it's, I think yesterday it was, it was, it was like the watch was in horror. And there was one day last week where it said, you've gotten such poor sleep that uh, you, you were supposed to work out today or tomorrow. You're not allowed. We're given, we put, they put it, it, it wasn't the exact wording. We put you in a 24 hour penalty box. Wow. <laughs> How little sleep you got. Wow. First, it's amazing that your watch even has that. So how many hours are you getting, Michael? Um, well, it said I got six hours or maybe even seven hours of very poor sleep. No. Um, I'm in bed quite a bit longer than that. Usually I've been averaging 5.40 to 6.20. I'm in bed a lot longer, but um, Jessica is not sleeping that much. And I think I'm just skipping the surface and it won't count it where I'm kind of in a la-la state. Um, I'm surprisingly doing well with it. I think I could be doing well, more well, <laughs> so to speak, there's good English, if I was sleeping more and my workouts are very um, tame. I mean, we're, we're recovering from pretty serious injury, but I am just going with the flow of I will get to the trampoline or the exercise cycle and I will hear you're only doing this or I'll be riding on the exercise cycle like yesterday. I thought I'd get in 30 minutes or more on the exercise cycle. And at 15 minutes, the leg stopped and said, let's go. We're done. Wow. And just listen to that. Be in such tune with that and go, okay, not what I wanted. Perfect. Wow. Um, well, Michael, I hate to tell you, um, but you're just getting ready for parenthood. It's because okay. You don't sleep. <laughs> you don't sleep. It's okay. Just get it's used okay. to it. <laughs> and, is, and I have made that joke. <laughs> this is a journey you decided to take, and it, it just Perfect. gets worse. <laughs> It's perfect. So, so on that note, the, 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 uh, I guess the last two things I want to cover, but most importantly, is we're trying to figure out, not figure out, we're trying to get into that flow state for uh, where do we get to live for at least the next six months yes. or so, uh, if not through the end of the summer. And we, we finally got to check out a place this Monday um, on just about the Pennsylvania border that... Um, just hit me wrong <laughs> it oh. was it was dark it was wood by wood i mean I dark like wood, wood oh. older kind of i felt like they could put it, it was it was more updated than this but i felt like they could put a paul revere sign on the side <laughs> of it and put a year <laughs> because you flipped on the lights inside it didn't get any brighter it was an, it was and set up as an airbnb so very nice cutely done but it didn't it didn't give me that uplifting uh, exactly feel. haunted could only look so cute <laughs> no matter what you paint on top of it <laughs> so 
we're going to look at a couple places that may or may not work out at all on a lake later today. Oh, nice. Oh, I'm and, crossing fingers. So this is be- the place you're going to rent between now and when? Yes. And, and I am I am chomping at the bit to buy a place, but we don't. New Jersey, we love. We love New Jersey. It's not where we're meant to be. We're yeah. very, very clear on that. The vehicle that kissed me made it abundantly clear this is we want a slower paced place yeah definitely yeah um and we want to stay near the hospitals until we get through uh childbirth so i'm i'm looking online at some amazing places for instance new hampshire vermont and we don't know that we want to be there for the long run but rather than this this harrowing adventure of continuously finding places to rent let's let's just find Hang that out place. for a while yeah but I we think get yeah. through this next period first. Do you realize that since I've known you, you've always been looking for a home? <laughs> <laughs> it's the theme, and it's coming. And there's that <laughs> theme in there. But we, we thought we had our, our forever home in Colorado for a while. I know. And then that turned out not to be the case and fires and the works. So, um, and I still, like, with a fire just outside of Boulder last week, um, that was my road. It was uh, a mile and a half. Well, actually, where it started, the last place we lived in Boulder was quarter mile from there is where the fire started. You had to go past that intersection of where it started every time you left the house. And so that's like I feel for everybody there. And and it's it's also a sign for us personally of can't go back because that's our biggest concern is fire. Yeah. Jessica gets very sick with the smoke, but also she keeps having when we lived there had visions of a fire just racing over a hill and torching the home before she could get home to 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 rescue our little ones. It turns out that's not as theoretical of a dream as it seems. Mm-hmm. Well, so, I think you'll know when it, you're still in the process. I I have a I have a sense, and I don't. I think you're you're meant to go with the flow. So I think just think about it roughly, like dreaming about it, and just don't think about it anymore. Aside from the whatever the house that you need, it's I don't know why yeah. your life has taken you this way, but from what I can tell, how your life seems to be working, you just flow into what it is, and you then know. you just this is this is for whatever reason this seems to be your life path. So well, I I I hope very much that you find uh, a nice lake house and or the not lake house a nice house. Well, the, these are lake houses we're looking at today. So we'll take a nice lake house if it's meant to be. If not, yeah. a light, nice house that's meant to be. The one requirement I would like to stick by, but that's up to universe as well, is I want it to feel more like we're on vacation rather than a <laughs> here's where you're stuck. Yes. Because we bring energy to everyone. We're pumped full with energy. Our land gives us energy. We are our land. So it'd be nice if we don't have to buffer <laughs> the energy. Yes of a, well, this is where I'm stuck uh, for this time period. I want it to be more uplifting. That's the one I keep putting out to the universe. But that's also what the universe is challenging me. The universe is saying, don't rush to take the first place. Have patience. Or as the expression that Jessica keeps saying right now, wait for it. (laughs) Wait for that right place. This is a weird thing, but I almost think that Rue will help you. Like, does does Rue come with you on the visits? He he came with us on the last visit. Today he's not because there's no uh, the Tesla. You can keep the car warm when you're you're in the house. Um, the uh, truck you can't. Oh, I and see. So we're gonna leave him behind for this one. But Rue requires first off some communities don't want a Rue in their community. Right. Others you just want to be uh, socially respectful and not be too close to another house so that if he's singing early in the morning. Um, that others can't hear it. Um, and so he is, though on the surface, challenging as far as, well, I could just throw myself here, there anyway. He's actually demanding a higher level. Yeah. And that's a good thing. Yeah. I have, I have a feeling he will be your main determinant. <laughs> <laughs> there is no doubt. <laughs> so just let him choose. Oh, my God. And, okay. and, and I went into automatic writing with him this morning, and he said the most important thing, he goes, I'd love some grass. He goes, but for this next time period, at the least, give me more space. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to be It's hard to be in an RV. Like, he's like, I've had to compromise a lot. <laughs> my lifestyle. <laughs> <He has. laughs> my, my typical lifestyle has been greatly compromised as much as I love you. The Tesla is not... 
to Tesla is not a good place for me all the time. Every now and then, okay. Yeah. Um, so my, you said you have one more thing. I only have one more thing, and I also know that you have to um, take off to go see your house. What's yeah. should we well, just the, move it to next week, or what's well, your the schedule? The last last thing I have is is um, our, our kitty uh, named Lumi or Lumiere, who's usually super super gentle. When we had a uh, when we had Megan Sisk do a uh, an animal reading with him uh, a year or two ago, said that his his name is um, I think Slasher. <laughs> It, it may have been, uh, uh, um, I think it might have been Slash itself. Uh, it was that he's a reformed gang member because he is a, um, <laughs> he's a, a rescued, um, uh, what do you, what's the term for it? For kitties that live in the wild. Um, oh yeah, feral cat. Yes, he's a rescued feral cat who came to us at a meditation center and just kept visiting us and visiting at us until we brought him home right before his whole community got taken down. So it was, wow. the timing was important um but he's been very um demanding of love lately and so he's done it to jessica before but never to me but this week he started sitting in front of the computer which he did at the start of the show yeah and then he sits in front of the computer he's all right for a minute or two if you're loving him up and then all of a sudden will bop you in the face with his claws like scratch or just like i got a cut on my lip on my upper lip and lower lip, you, you can't probably <laughs> see it. It's three days old now, but it, 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 and I'm going, man, I'm just loving you up. <laughs> Maybe he's also had enough of this RV setup. Maybe that's what's going on. <laughs> so we're in a little danger from Slash, but we love him very much. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Well, I love that. Well, it would be interesting to see. So I'll just well, mine is only two seconds, which I yep. um I last year. Throughout, like the whole, I'd say first six, like the in twenty twenty to twenty twenty one, I was writing like, what is my plan for the future? Because it was, it's my Saturn return. In fact, my Saturn return ends in in, in around mid February. So I thought, okay, I have like a couple more months to squeeze it in. Not that anything needs squeezing because probably it's going to last for even longer than that. I don't think these things are hard dates. However, um. I, so I was writing like my vision, my plans, like what I wanted my next work to be. And it's amazing because I can actually, I've been re reviewing my notes from 2021 yeah. and it's amazing because everything that I had written in my automatic writing has really come to pass in ways that I would not have expected. So it's just such a joy to read through um, your automatic writing items and then just see how life evolves in ways that we don't understand at all and then it, it comes out in ways that we don't understand at all like for example I, I, I've been looking for like I, I decided that I, I just don't even want to partner up with anyone because I'd gone through literally I counted eight people who wanted to partner up last year that yeah. were like no and I was like just forget about it don't even think about partnering up on anything um, and the person came like right around july and now we're actually working on several different things but it's just interesting just seeing um how with automatic writing all this stuff has come to fruition not in any way that i expected but it really feels magical when you navigate your life in this way and you write in this way and you flow i don't know life seems just like a surprise like a box of chocolates all the time I like that. And it's a yeah. fairy tale outside with snow falling off of the trees. So as you're saying that, it's, it's, I'm looking at that and, and anchoring it in that life can be that way. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows what this next little house is going to look like? Maybe it will be the house. You just don't know. You don't know. Nothing. You know nothing. I know nothing. <laughs> exactly. And, and that is the best place to be. And it doesn't mean that I'm, that I'm a, a lack of intelligence. It means that there is a lack of forcing Anything. Yeah, exactly. You go upstairs, you're like, I don't know why I'm up here, Mike. Oh, I see, because a star bomb is flying in the air. <laughs> this is why I came up here. What? <laughs> I'm like, all right. I'm like, how? I don't understand this. It's like, yeah, you don't, and you're not going to, and stop trying to even think about it. But I revel oh, in man. the joy of doing it. So anyhow, um, well, good luck on your stuff. Thank you, and and to you as well. And, and may 2022 start off for you. Um, with a little bit less, I don't know what you want, but a little less fullness that you had at your peak last yes, year. Yes, please.
<laughs> Please. I don't and you have a vacation it. coming up. I do. I do. I'm going to go out to California, so I'm excited. Woohoo! How does Woo-hoo, it get any better yes, than this? Son, exactly. How does it get any better than this? <laughs> so for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler and, and CJ Lou from the Fired Up with CJ show. Saying be well, have fun, wait for it. <laughs> don't force anything. Find that flow if you can. And above and beyond all else, shine bright. Woohoo!